Greeley once boasted with the following words. We have stricken the insla- and sla- we have stricken the slave shackles from four million human beings and brought all labors to a common level, not so much by the elevation of former slaves as by practically reducing the whole working population, white and black, to a condition of serfdom. While boasting of our noble deeds, we are careful to conceal the ugly fact that by our iniquitous money system, we have nationalized a system of oppression which, though more refined, is no less cruel than the old system of chattel slavery. That system is today called the Federal Reserve System. I'm going to stop here a second. Now, remember, I wrote this 20 years ago. The Federal Reserve System. It is a non-government entity, a privately owned corporation that controls the volume of money in America. President James A. Garfield once said, whoever controls the volume of money in any country is absolute master of all industry and commerce. With the present day money system, there is really no money, only debt. More than a hundred years ago, John C. Calhoun said, that we had given the banks the government credit for nothing, only to borrow it back at interest. Every dollar is a dollar of debt created out of nothing, except paper and ink or a ledger entry, and is backed by nothing. For these nothings, all assets in America have been mortgaged. Thus the scripture says, you were sold for nothing. The Bible is the living Word of God. It not only told of the formation of America, it has told how it would be put to sleep, how the locusts would invade. God has kept His Word, and America needs saved. There's no saving option at the polls. None. She's got to be redeemed. Now, what are you talking about, preacher? History is his story. And history repeats itself. And when you read the story of his people, you find out that we have repeated this history before. It's like we... Don't keep our end of the deal. And we find out that God keeps his. For example, let's go to the book of Judges, chapter 2, verse 10, first of all. And then we'll go to Judges 3, 7. But it gives past, past, long past history. But that history cycle is repeated. And this passage will give you an idea When you understand true history, you'll understand what is happening right now at the present. But, of course, you've got to understand that God still has a people. He still has a land. He still keeps his word. This is what we read in his word. Judges 2, 10, quote, And all that generation also were gathered to their fathers, and there arose another generation after them who did not know the Lord, nor yet the work which he had done for Israel. Then the sons of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord and served the Baals. And they forsook the Lord, the God of their fathers, who had brought them out of the land of Egypt, and followed other gods from among the gods of the people who were around them, and bowed themselves down to them. Thus they provoked the Lord to anger. We'll stop there a second and come back to it, but I just want to put this out. You talk about provoking God to anger. Today, today, as I was coming down to this pulpit from the radio ranch, I happened to turn on CNN News on the satellite radio. And I heard that out there on the voting day that they're going to have in California, there's a thing on the ballot to do away with with same-sex marriages. And the option is civil unions, something about civil unions versus gay marriages. Have you heard about this? 
And I thought, what in the world? You got these Judeo-Christian mamsy-pamsy, so-called Christian soldiers. Oh, they're going to come up against gay marriages and say, just be happy with civil union. When are we going to turn to the Word of God and say the Word of God says no gay marriages, no civil union, no homosexuals, period? Not in my land! Oh, no. We're going to try it a different way because that's just too harsh. Well, go ahead. But know this, that God's got a destruction determined for our land. And those of you that are going to make it through it, you're going to either come back all the way or you're gone with all those that went the way of Sodom and Gomorrah. Now, I feel spirit-led. That's not on my notes, but I tell you, I feel spirit-led to tell you that. So you can call this preacher a radical. Mr. Obama, one time I was listening to him talk, and he was talking about how we should be against extremism. And I thought to myself, you know, that is just a subtle way of telling you how much he is against Jesus Christ. Because if Jesus Christ wasn't an extremist, then the word extremist doesn't exist. He was willing to die for what he believed in. He was willing to die for those he loved. And that's extreme as far as they're concerned. I was thinking as I was coming down here that I went to see, not necessarily proud of it, that Steven Spielberg last Raiders of the Lost Ark movie because they were showing it in the 50s. And I go to these things to pick up on their esoteric message. And he had a big scene there on a college campus and there was a big sign. And you know what the sign said? Better red than dead. That was not the statement made in the 50s. The statement made in the 50s was better dead than red. But I tell you, the statement that's going to be made in the future is better reds dead than us. Because that's what the battle's coming down to. And they don't intend just to remove the crosses from the right-of-ways in Wyoming as they've done down there in, in uh, Florida. They intend to remove every Christian from this land. You might love those little lovey-dovey preachers today, little Judeo-Christian, non-barking, dumb dogs that they are, but you'll hate them on the day of judgment, and you'll hate them the very day of destruction that comes on this land because nobody warns you. Does that make sense? Well, I'm off point. Where was I? Let's go back where we were at. It says, So they forsook the Lord and served Baal and the Ashtoreth. And the anger of the Lord burned against Israel, and he gave them into the hands of plunders who plundered them, and he sold them into the hands of their enemies around them so that they could no longer stand before their enemies. Wherever they went, the hand of the Lord was against them for evil as the Lord had spoken and as the Lord had sworn to them so that they were severely distressed. Another passage in the book of Judges is chapter 3, verse 7, that gives the same story, storyline. We read it rapidly. It says in Judges 3, 7, And the sons of Israel did evil, what was, did what was evil in the sight of the Lord and forgot the Lord their God and served the Baals and the Ashtoreth. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against Israel so that he sold them into the hand of Cushan, um, king of Mesopotamia, and the sons of Israel served him eight years. I skipped over a little bit. But, and when the sons of Israel cried to the Lord, the Lord raised up a deliverer for them. And I say to this, God is still true to his word, and if we will cry out, and that's the design of the music DVD, God Save America Again, if we will cry out and turn from our wicked ways, God will keep his deal. Because it says you were sold for nothing and you'll be redeemed. Jesus Christ is the Redeemer. Redeem means to buy back. And his people have been sold into captivity. Now, what is he going to buy us back with? 1 Peter 1.18 tells us. And this is why they want to keep you from the saving 
waters of baptism wherein you come into contact with the blood